Safety is one of those things that we do kind of have to have on our minds if we're heading out onto a big tour. And we do get asked this question periodically. So in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you seven tips to keeping your bike and your gear safe while on tour. Let's roll. Welcome back rad bike adventurers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Ryan and this is the place where we talk about all things bike packing, bike touring and bike lifestyle related. We wanna get you confidently prepared to take on your very own tour. I do also wanna start this video by saying that my partner and I have toured extensively and we have never had anything stolen. So I don't want you to think that this is some commonplace experience that cycle tourists get their things stolen all the time or that it's really, really dangerous to cycle tour. But it's always good to take precaution and to know ways to keep your gear safe to avoid something happening. So I think there's a few common circumstances where we might worry about our bikes and our gear on tour, and those would be going into a restaurant or a grocery store, cafe, something like that, going city exploring, or you're off hiking or going swimming. And then lastly, overnight while you're sleeping, right? Where anytime you can't be right next to your bicycle. So we're gonna cover all those things. And like I said, got seven tips and I'm also gonna have a bonus tip at the end, which I think is very valuable. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Okay, so tip number one. Now this might seem a little bit silly, but you wanna make your gear and your bike look a little bit undesirable. Kinda wanna vagabond it up. So I've seen people get brand new bikes out of the shop and they will just cover them in electrical tape. They'll cover the decals, maybe add some strip of duct tape here and there just make it look like it's not fresh and brand new because as we all know thieves definitely go after things that look shiny and new you can put some personality into it adding stickers is a really fun way to do it adding patches to your bags another thing you can do is just kind of have like clothes hanging off of your bag underwear really works and it's really useful because you can dry your clothes that way too but again it just kind of makes your bike look less like it's something really really valuable by the way this is going to naturally happen as you go on tour it's really funny for us to look back on our at the beginning of our trip when we look so fresh and then towards the end, everything's kind of like haggard and dirty. So you can speed up that process by adding stickers, adding patches to your bag and taking away some of the shine, I would say. Okay, tip number two is to always keep your bike as close to you as possible when you can. So if you're going into a store, you can ask them if you can bring it inside. If you're going into a cafe or a restaurant, you can sit somewhere where you could see your bike outside. Sometimes there's a window seat or something like that. Just going back to that first example of bringing it inside to the grocery store, usually if you ask and if you're polite, people will let you know. Bringing it in is a nice way to make you feel a little bit more secure. So this isn't always possible or convenient, which takes us to step three, which is to get a lock and to use it. So some of you might be thinking, well, yeah, obviously you would have a lock, but considering how much time you spend with your bike on tour, it is tempting to not bring one. I've definitely thought about it. Like, do I really need a lock? I'm with my bike like 99% of the time. But yes, you really, really should bring a lock. Now there's tons of different locks out there and we plan to make a video about the different ones and which ones we prefer. And when we do make that video, I will put a link up here. But for now, I should get it. On my first tour, I used a big old U-lock like this. Now there are smaller U-locks, but generally U-locks are pretty heavy or a D-lock if you are in the UK. Who else says D-lock? It's a D or a U. And while it's super secure and it's a great lock, it is really friggin' heavy. So on our last tour, we swapped out and we now use something like this, a cable lock. This actually weighs over a pound less than that other one. Not as secure, but again, you're not going to be leaving your bike out for any long period of time. We're gonna to get to that. So something like this is definitely sufficient. There's definitely lighter locks out there than this one, but this is somewhere in the middle of the security range. I think it ranks as like a number six or something. It'll have like security ratings. It is so tempting to just say, oh, I'm just gonna pop into the store real quick, or I'm just gonna pop into the cafe real quick and not lock your bike. There are circumstances where you absolutely can do that. You know, you're in the middle of the countryside. There's absolutely no one around. Sure, maybe you can just pop in and not lock your bike, but I would always advise you to just at least lock it to itself. Avoid that horrible circumstance where you literally went in somewhere for two minutes, you come out and your bike's gone. You definitely don't want that to happen to you on tour. So get a lock and use it. Though I will say, I think there is less of a chance of your bike getting stolen when it's totally loaded down. Cause I think a lot of people look at bikes like that and think, I don't even know how anybody could ride such a thing. So you do have that going for you. Okay, we're at tip number four now. And now this tip, remember this. Never, ever, ever, ever leave your bike outside overnight if you're in a city or a town, even a village, just don't do it. 
don't do it. This is how bikes get stolen, is leaving them outside overnight somewhere in a city or a town. And if your bike doesn't get stolen, you might get something else stolen, like your saddle or a wheel. And you just don't want that to happen. So really don't do it. One night when we were on tour, we stayed with someone in Italy and the person had said, oh, it's fine, it's really safe. We leave our bikes out. And they lived like three stories up. And I thought like, ah, yeah, it'll be okay. But I'm telling you that whole night, I was just like, oh, the bikes. And I kept looking out the window, peering out to make sure they were okay. They were fine, but I would just advise you, just don't do it. Just bring your bike inside, give yourself peace of mind and don't take that risk. Now, if you're in the back country or you're camping, of course, this is a totally different circumstance and you shouldn't have to worry about leaving your bike outside overnight. We actually traveled with a friend and she did lock her bike no matter what. Even if we were in the middle of a wild campsite, she liked to lock her bike to itself or around a small tree, just again, to give herself peace of mind. So you can always go that route too. And again, I think it really just depends on where you are. If you're at a campsite, I absolutely would lock your bike, preferably to something. I have heard of some stories of people getting their bikes and their gear stolen at campsites. So at campsites, definitely lock your bike. So now you may be wondering, well, what should I do with the rest of my gear? Okay, we're moving on to that next. So tip number five is to keep your valuables close to you at all times. So a good way to do this is to have a bag or a satchel, if you will, and have your, your wallet, your phone, extra money, what have you, whatever's valuable to you, your camera, keep that in a little bag, just much easier to grab that bag out and go into the store than trying to rummage through all your stuff and find all your valuable things. Now you may be saying, Ryan, everything I have on tour is valuable. You know, my sleeping bag is valuable. My tent's valuable. These are the things that I'm living with. In our case, we never really worried too much about that stuff. Again, see tip number one, make your stuff look kind of vagabondy. People really generally won't want to touch it. I really never would take the computer out and walk around with it in the grocery store. I just figured it's safe and I do generally trust people but I would kind of cover it with some dirty laundry. So I figured if anybody opens my bag, they're just gonna be like, oh gross, like dirty socks and underwear, no thank you. So that's another tip there is if you do have some other valuable stuff and you don't wanna lug it all into the store with you, just cover it with something unappealing. One really awesome piece of kit that I do recommend if you're bringing a computer is a small SSD drive like this. You can hold a ton of files and it is super, super thin and tiny. And so a lot of times if we were gonna be hopping out somewhere, I would just take this with me. And then I figured if something did happen to the computer, at least I have all my files with me and it is just so tiny. I can just fit it right in my pocket. Boop. Okay, an extra little tip I have for you is to stash money somewhere that is not in your wallet. We would put money in various places on our bike. You know, this is up to you how much you wanna set aside. But again, so you have your valuables on you, say something happens to those valuables. Now at least you have a backup plan with something stashed on your bike. And then when you forget about that money, it'll be a nice little present when you find it. <laughs> Ooh, look, $20. Now in tandem with leaving your bike somewhere overnight, let's talk about city exploring. Yes, this is always a tricky one. We do get this question a lot. What do you do with your bikes in a city? Well, if you're staying with someone or in a hostel, definitely recommend storing all of your bags and your gear in the place you're staying. Uh, if you're at a campsite, sometimes they'll have lockers. We generally would just put our stuff in our tent and zip it up, hope for the best. Again, taking our valuables with us. And if you have anything valuable mounted on your bike, say like a bike computer or a light, it's best to take it off or take it with you if you go to explore. Like this, it's definitely not as secure as a U-lock. So you could try to borrow a U-lock if you're staying with a warm showers host, that's an option. If you're just going around the city riding and seeing some sights, absolutely no problem. But if you wanna go and spend four hours in a museum or do something else that you're gonna be leaving your bikes outside for a long time, you do have to weigh the pros and the cons of that. When we were in Sydney, we did go to a museum and it was really awesome. I had kind of scoped it out the day before and I saw like, okay, there's not too much foot traffic here and there are a place to lock your bikes. But I will say that there was definitely a few times while we were in the museum that I kind of was distracted and thought, I hope the bikes are okay. So to avoid that completely, you could just change it up and go explore the city on foot by taking public transport. Maybe your host wants to give you a tour. That's a really great way to do it because it's nice to have a change and then you don't have to worry about your bikes or your gear at all. So again, you can do it. Just know that it is a little bit more risky, but it's not out of the question. Just make sure you take precautions and be wary of where you're locking your bike up. And again, don't leave it there overnight, whatever you do. <laughs> okay, we are at tip number seven, and this is using the buddy system. Now you might be saying, Ryan, I am traveling solo. How can I have a buddy? Well, you'd be surprised how many people you'd meet on tour. So you might pick up some friends along the way. I'd also recommend chatting up locals, say you're in a town 
and people are generally attracted to you so they're probably going to come and chat you up and if you're feeling in a good mood it's i think it's a really nice way to get to meet people and then hey as a bonus you know if they're sitting there having lunch you can say hey i'm gonna go in and order some food do you mind just watching my stuff and i think they'd probably do that anyway because now you have a bond with this person they're going to be looking out for your gear but again still lock your things but just extra security if you're traveling with a partner or other friends this is a no-brainer uh, my partner and I want we would just kind of rotate who went into the store and the other person would sit outside and watch the gear and look at the map or check social media whatever so utilizing the buddy system is really really valuable when you're on tour okay we have made it to the end of the video by the way guys you've you've come this far if you're digging it please give us a thumbs up that helps the video it tells YouTube show it to more people uh, subscribe if you want to see more content like this blah 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 let's get to the bonus so my bonus tip is having the right attitude, like the right mindset. If you're about to embark on a tour and you're going out with the intention of the world is a dangerous place, I'm at risk, my bike's at risk, my gear's at risk, I hope I don't get things stolen, 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 I think you're gonna get something stolen. Now, I'm not saying that anyone who's had their gear stolen has those thoughts, but I'm just saying they might enhance the chance of that happening to you. And even if you don't believe in any of the law of attraction or anything like that, it's still just not a great mindset to be in. You don't wanna be worrying and anxious your whole trip. We have found that the majority of people are so generous and kind. We've had people run after us when we've left stuff behind to give it to us. You know, that just really restores your faith in humanity. And I think that's what cycle touring will do in the end. Of course, there are risks. That is why we have this list to give you the tips of things to prevent anything from happening to your gear or your bike. But generally, people are good in this world and they do want to help you and see you succeed. I think heading out on tour with that kind of attitude is going to give you the best and most enjoyable experience. I hope this video was helpful and that gives you some reassurance for your things while you're on tour. And I would really like to pose the question to you now, what techniques do you use to keep your bike and your gear safe on tour? Did I miss anything? Please put it down in the comments down below. This is what YouTube is for. It's for creating a community and helping each other. If you'd like to help support us, we've got links to our Patreon page, to our PayPal page, if you just wanna leave us a quick tip, and we got stickers and t-shirts for sale. All right, that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching. And remember to rat on. In some places in Vancouver, they actually have bike parking where they will watch your bike for you. And it was free. That was the coolest thing ever. We need more of that. More bike, more bike parking. More bike valley. That's what it was called, bike valley. We need more bike valley in the world.